Hello, everybody. This is Gregory with 5 Minute Catholic Apologetics, where five minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today, we're going to talk about how the squeaky wheel gets the grease and how I think in this analogy, a lot of well meaning, good traditional Catholics get overshadowed by the mad rad trads. Now, before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Nome de Patris et Filio et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patris et Filio et Spiritui Sancti. Secutura Principio et Nuc et Semper. Et de Seculi, Seculorum. I've been pretty consistent here. I, I mentioned in my, my, I think I have two biographical episodes here, like who, who am I? Um, that I am a traditional Catholic. I would identify as a traditional Catholic. And sadly, we shouldn't even have to use these adjectives in front of Catholic because there's no such thing as a liberal Catholic. I have an early episode on that. We're either practicing the faith, we're choosing to practice the faith the best that we can, or we're really not, I mean, we're Catholic in name only, we could be baptized Catholic, but we're not really practicing the faith. And we've kind of borrowed these political terms of you know, liberals and conservatives, and we've applied it to the Catholic faith, but we really should not do that. That being said, you know, what is a traditional Catholic? I do have an episode on, on, on that, exactly what is a traditional Catholic. The far Catholic left would say that we're all extremists. I'm sure they would say that, that we're all stymieing the spirit of Vatican II, no doubt. And then if you look on the far right, they would say that that, tr that traditional Catholics who don't embrace sedificantism or benevicantism were progressive modernist sellouts, right? Because you just can't, you can't please everybody. But, you know, traditional Catholics, I would say the majority of traditional Catholics want a good mass, right? They, they and I, I can't speak for like a whole subculture or demographic, but I would say they would prefer either a TLM or an ordinary to the chair of St. Peter Mass, or even a Novus Ordo Mass, I would say the majority of them would prefer, I wouldn't get these generalizations, but would prefer maybe ad orientum, they would prefer communion on the tongue, they would prefer maybe not to have 15 extraordinary ministers, they would prefer not to have really bad 1970s folk music, uh, they would prefer that maybe people dress up. They would prefer that the church architecture isn't Freemasonic or looking Protestant like the majority of our churches. And if you're, if you're not familiar, I've had an Instagram account called Catholic underscore Protestant where I post a picture and you have to guess if it's Catholic or Protestant. So it gives you an idea of how bad our church architecture has been for the last 50 or so years. So they would prefer to have like a traditional basilica style church that has stained glass, statues, you know, th things that have been in our uh, cultural deposit of faith for some time. Uh, I think that, that that's a good kind of swath. And of course, the traditional Catholics practice the faith. They believe in the social teachings of the church. So they support uh, the, the pro-life. They support, they probably don't support homosexual unions or transgender issues. They actually believe in the real presence. They, they probably don't believe in contraception. They actually practice the faith. So they're 100% obedient to the faith, but they just have certain pious preferences, as, as I mentioned with the aforementioned. In terms of their prayer life, they do the rosary probably daily. Some of them do them in Latin, like, like I do in Latin. Um, maybe they'll do Liturgy of the Hours, or they'll read some sort of lectionary like uh, Magnificat or Benedictus or one of these things. They do works of mercy. They try to be daily communicates and stuff like that. So, I mean, I would say that if I had to delineate a sketch, maybe that's what a traditional Catholic is. Some of the traditional Catholic women would wear mantillas or chapel veils, and they just take their faith seriously and they love their faith. Now, the problem with this is that's the typical traditional Catholic who's obedient to Holy Mother Church. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. So when we hear traditional Catholics, the sad thing is that the, the mad rad trads get all the attention. And so it, it's almost like when you're in school, in elementary school, and the mad rad trads slash studies are all like, me, 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 and the, and the teacher's just always redirecting them. <laughs> or you want to use the analogy of the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? So. It, 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 the set of Vicanists give us the bad rap because I think the large majority of people that are on the right uh, in Catholicism are well-meaning and obedient to Holy Mother Church. I think everybody who's got a modicum of IQ, unless you are the, the, the schismatic German bishops, understand the church, you know, it, it's not in its best form right now. We are in a series of crises. Um, you could be hyperbolic and say this is the worst time in church history. I, I have an episode on that where I would say we're not in the worst time, but yeah, we're in one of the bad times. And we could chalk it up to a variety of reasons. We could blame everything on, on the papacy. We could blame it on poor uh, 
bishop leadership. We could blame it on bad theology the last 30, 40 years. We could blame it on the mass. You could blame it on just, there's so many things to blame it on. But either way, I think most traditional Catholics realize that this is the best time uh, in the faith. And I think some traditional Catholics rally around this is like, okay, well, this is the time where saints are created. If you think of the 16th century, if you think of the fourth century, some other really bad times in our history, this is where a lot of saints are cranked out. And this is where we really need a call to holiness and a call to rally around uh, the church, Holy Mother Church, because yeah, it's a bad time. And I think most traditional Catholics realize, kind of like with the sex abuse scandal that really popped about 20 years ago, yeah, this is a bad time, but this is not when you leave Holy Mother Church. We double down, we pray harder, we do our works of mercy, we keep working on ourselves, we try not to get too sucked into the apocalyptic Catholic kind of content that's out there about getting getting all Catholics mad and angry. But the set of Acanus and the Mad Rat Trads get all the attention. And I talked about it, I don't know, it was maybe maybe seven, six episodes before about What's the best approach with, with Pope Francis or whoever is the future Pope? If it's a Francis II, you might probably get an idea of, of kind of maybe the, the theme of his pontificate. But even if we have a John Paul III or whatever, I think that the, the approach of the set of Vicanists is not a good approach because all you're doing is getting, the, getting Rome more angry. And I think that you can, you can get more with honey than you can with vinegar. And I think that the approach of the set of Candace, they get a lot of the attention when Rome looks at America. Unfortunately, they see America as a place where there's these hotbeds of set of Candace. And I get it. Look, Francis has been on record as saying that he wishes the American Catholic Church was more uh, informed to, to his teachings. And I get a lot of traditional Catholics say, yeah, we don't want to be aligned with your teachings. And I get that, but they're still obedient to Pope Francis. But Pope Francis, on some level, is right. Like if you read Demos II, the anonymous writing that's written to the, the future College of Cardinals, it kind of mentions in that, uh, that that Pope Francis can be a little, I wouldn't say petty, I wouldn't say vindictive, but he can be petty. And when he, when he looks at the American Catholic Church, um, it's just the squeaky wheels are getting a lot of the attention and this is gonna be the set of Acanus groups and just the, the, the angry groups. And I just think that unfortunately it, it brings attention to a lot. And so it's easy to generalize that any American Catholic that is traditional Catholic aligns themselves with set of a canism or mad rad tragedy, whatever you want to call it. And that's simply not true. I would tell you the majority of traditional Catholics that are right of, right of center are well-meaning, doing the best with their faith, practicing their faith, in our obedient to Holy Mother Church. And just, are, they recognize that, yeah, this is a bad time. We do have some bad people in the church. We've always had bad people in the church. We've always struggled with this, with the wheats versus the weeds. And we're gonna get through this. And it's just frustrating to see that um, the set of Acanists and the, the, this very just kind of angry militant side that uh, is okay with schism, is okay with rebellion, and whatnot are getting all the attention because what's going to happen is this sort of Damocles has kind of been hanging over us is eventually going to come and it's going to hurt the, the well-meaning traditional Catholics that might go to a FSSP or Institute of Christ the King or Ordinary of the Church of St. Peter or what, whatever mass and unfortunately we are getting kind of labeled with all the SETIs and all the mad ones which is unfortunate and look I am no way as I talked about in the episodes that I talked about with my nearby mission of divine mercy. No way an apologist for Pope Francis. And it's sad when I kind of say these things, oh, you apologize, you're apologist. For, I'm not an apologist for Pope Francis. I don't think what he did in terms of restricting the Latin mass uh, was, was, was prudential on his part, because of course it's not ex cathedra. You know, popes can make mistakes. I just don't think it was prudential on his part. But what I'm saying is that it's unfortunate that just well-meaning traditional Catholics who are obedient to Holy Mother Church kind of get just plowed over uh, in terms of media attention over by the angry set of a canis. And ultimately, this is going to hurt all of us because of the attention that the set of a canis get. Because I think eventually, um, you know, unless we get a new pope after Francis dies, that's going to kind of go back to what Benedict did and just open up the TLM and, and whatnot. Unless that happens, all this attention that the SETIs are getting is, is going to hurt the traditional, well meaning traditional Catholics. Guys, post in the comments. I'd like to hear from you. Until next time, take care. God bless. And pray. Thank you.